Welcome to you on the rocks with Wes and Adam. How you doing, man? Good. How are you this fine, fine evening? Pretty good. Now, before we even say anything, what are you drinking? I have a little Woodford Reserve. It's a uh, select aged bourbon from the uh, great fine bourbon state of Kentucky. Mm, the only true bourbon state. That's right. Except no substitutes. What about you, sir? So I'm kicking back a little bit of High West double mm -hmm. rye whiskey. Ooh. This stuff is so smooth. Smooth. Mm. Oh, you know what? We're remiss. Cheers. Cheers, my friend. And to all of you out there. Cheers. Everyone out there. Mm. My ice has been melting because that's been sitting for a while. Okay, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so we should probably we, describe what this is about, right? We, we definitely should. Uh, this idea uh, came to us uh, at probably in a dream, maybe a nightmare, of where we just get Wet together dream. and drink. Yeah. And that, that 12 hours distance doesn't make it possible to do in person. So right. it's like, what the hell? Let's, let's, let's do it virtually. Yeah. Let's have some virtual, virtual one-on-one -on -one with a crowd. I mean, it's not really one-on-one -on -one at that point, but the no. sensation's the same. So we're going to do it anyway. Uh, let me give a quick <laughs> shout out to everyone in the chat room and especially Stormy and CJ, because you guys got in here way early. I'm starting to they question did. whether you have anything going on in your life. Well, that yeah. early. I, I've been chatting up CJ for so long. Oh, he's really? He, he's really dying to get in on it. And before we, before we go stinky further. pinky in his ear. Oh, yeah, just a little. Just, a little. <laughs> just the tip. You feel it? Uh, I wanted to give a giant, giant shout out to all the uh, the gang of the Inferno moderators and admin. It's a wonderful Facebook group that uh, people who like to get together and drink and share many sordid tales of IT and other such things. Well, they do just that. Oh, really? They all happen to be Satanists. Huh. Funny and, uh, how that works out. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it funny? <laughs> no, wait a second. So there's a whole group I don't even know about? Oh, yes. There, there's Actually, a giant. There's, I'm sure there's tons of fucking groups I don't know I'm... about. <laughs> all right. Well, let me uh, welcome to all of them the Infernal Tech Drinkers. <laughs> what your group name is zachary thanks so much for joining us man stephanie when are you gonna dump this bag of bones over here and uh you know bake in my <laughs> kitchen uh <laughs> lauren hey honey, how you doing hon? it's been a while uh dallas my man what's up laguna beach how you doing uh dr s what's up man tiger princess how you doing hon uncle good to see you chris how you doing and uh, that's it for now. So if you're coming in during the chat, we're going to uh, have some time to just chat because that's all this whole fucking show is. It's us drinking and chatting. Now, before we started, which is what we should never have done because we ended up going off in a weird Wilford Brimley diabetes <laughs> rant with oatmeal before, it's the diabetes. <laughs> before we even started, which is pretty weird. I had something that I wanted to bring up. <clears throat> Dark and light. How you doing, Robert? What's up, man? Josh, good to see you. Um, I wanted to bring up, I, there was a time uh, right after high school, I was living in this really sort of roach infested duplex, really kind of gross, but lots of drugs, lots of alcohol, lots of boys, lots of girls, great times. Uh, I mean, lots of drugs, to be fair. <laughs> great times and uh lots of stories out of that place but one of them was that uh the guy who uh lived there he didn't own the duplex but he lived there the longest so he kind of had seniority of ownership almost um he told me about this gentleman in downtown salt lake city that was looking for uh male porn stars and he and his friend had already gone and got their photos taken front by this guy and they send the photos down to Vegas and they do a trip out to Vegas to see if, you know, they have what it takes or they have the weird look or whatever it is. Um, and he started chatting me up about it. And I was dating my now wife at the time, talking to her like, hey, what do you think about me being a porn star? Like, it wouldn't really be star. I'm, I'm not, you know, I don't, I'm not full of airs, but what, it, you know, it, it would be quick, easy money. And it's 
just you know pressing the flesh <laughs> ultimately <laughs> that's all it is and she was like no no I was like, but what What do you mean, no? And she's like, you'd be sleeping with a bunch of other women. I was like, well, maybe some guys too. She's like, no, no. <laughs> and so I immediately, she shut it down, but I still pursued it. Shh. I hope you're not watching this, Shauna. Um, <laughs> and don't so, anybody tell. Yeah, don't. don't anybody... Seriously, none of you. None, at all. Nobody say a thing. Uh, everyone send her a message saying, don't watch the show. It'll make sure it'll work. Um, yeah. And, <laughs> So uh, I call the guy. He gives me the guy's number. I call the guy, and um, he's like, yeah, I'd love to meet you. Um, just come on over anytime." And he gave me his apartment number. It was in a downtown hotel at the time that was really, really nice. And it was near the you know top floor, so this guy had to be at least monetarily on the level. Um, and I felt really good about it. I was like, all right, well, you know, how about we go do this, this, you know, this specific time and date? This was decades ago, so I don't remember off the top of my head. And um, I was like, I'm just going to have my buddy Brett come with me and he was like oh no 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 you can't have your friend come with you I'm like what are you talking about he's like no you have to be alone we don't do, we don't do two guys i'm like no, no 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 i'm not gonna fuck him i just want him to come with me as like you know companion because i've never done this before and i feel a little nervous he's like i can't take photos with you and him i'm like you're not getting what i'm saying i'm not gonna get naked with him he's just gonna be in the room present with me and you, a stranger who is photographing me naked to see if I have the look you're looking for, that's it. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I can't do that. It has to just be you alone. I was like, all right, whatever. Okay. So we set the date. Um, and at the time, <laughs> coffee was huge. I mean, this was in the 90s. So everyone went to coffee bars and the coffee clubs were everywhere. And so there was this really great gothic coffee club called, oh, fuck, Confetti? I can't remember. I think it was confettis or something like that. But it was just really great coffee, gothic coffee dive where um, I went. And his buddy, who had also seen this guy, started telling me a story. He's like, yeah, well, he gives you some drugs to help, you know, drop your uh, reservations. Um, and I don't really remember what happened after that. I was like, what? What do you mean? He's like, yeah, he took pictures for sure. I don't really remember what happened after that, though. Like, I kind of just passed out. And so I looked over Brad. I was like, did, did he give you pills? He's like, oh, yeah, but of course you're nervous. So, you know, it's just to take the edge off. I'm like, do you remember what happened? He's like, I mean, we drank, but no, I don't really remember what happened after that. I was like, did you guys get raped by this guy in this hotel room who took pictures of you naked? Like, do you have naked photos running around somewhere? And they're like, no, that couldn't. No, no. And after that, that ended my porn career because I was like, no, that dude fucking just <laughs> raped you. He has nothing to do with porn. He was just luring young boys, young impressionable men up into his room to rape them. There's no fucking way I'm doing that. I'm going to do what my wife says <laughs> from now on. So that was my that porn is, story. That is a smart, smart thing. <laughs> smart, smart thing. <laughs> so yes, yeah, he was. He was like, come with me and you'll see. <laughs> Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> so, the, but uh, was the uh, the crux of the story that it was Wilford Brimley taking the picture <laughs> <laughs> with like a bowl of oatmeal? He wouldn't it's stop like, talking about diabetes or diabetes. <laughs> diabetes wants you to yeah, take like oatmeal in his mustache, his big old white mustache. Every time he talked, it like came out at you. You had to dodge like <laughs> wheat and oat kernels. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> Diving, dodging everywhere. <laughs> so can we talk about your hat? Because you've been on this show a number of times. Not this show, but yeah. the series that I do. And uh, yeah. I've never seen you in a hat before. Well, yeah. Yeah. I uh, have always been a big fan of, uh, of, of westerns, of course. And uh, one of my favorite western shows uh, was Justified. That was on a few years ago. And it actually took place in the, so uh, the state of Kentucky. Such a good show. Uh, so badass, and uh, and so this was a, a hat very similar to what what he had worn, and uh, uh, it, you know just in the homage of Johnny Depp and and others who who can can rock a good Stetson hat. I decided to uh, kindly wear one, and uh, nice. So so and of course you know uh, always in a black hat and. You know, from this angle, though, I, I kind of feel like I look like one of the characters from The Godfather, though. It's kind of weird. 
<laughs> yeah, nice. nice. Um, a tip of the peen to you all. <laughs> Another thing we were talking about. I, I, can I just be honest? I'm a little nervous about this show um, because yeah. normally I, I have an outline of like different topics to hit, sort of different bullet points to sort of tack onto. Right. And at this point, there's nothing. We have nothing. So absolutely nothing. And you know, this really reminds me of uh, of Seinfeld. Right. I mean, it, it's like Seinfeld, only with a lot more fucks in it. <laughs> there was a there's a lot of suggested fucking in Seinfeld. <laughs> really, is. and I, I think Kramer got more than anyone else. Like, yes, in the end, that Kramer dude. was living it up, man. It, you know, no job, no yeah. responsibility. How he kept that apartment, we don't know. I'm sure he's selling <laughs> drugs or selling his ass somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> what I loved about him is he always wore um like old people clothes, like back in the yeah. day retro clothes, which I always thought was so great. They just yeah. always looked really great. I mean, his pants were always too short because he's just a lanky, you know, crazy individual. And they're supposed to be a little goofy. But I, yeah. his shirts were always on point. Like, yeah. go back and look at them now. It holds up. Like, vintage fashion, that dude had it. His hair was all jacked. His pants were yeah. all jacked. But his shirts and shoes, mm, I'm telling you. He was a hipster doofus. There's, oh, yeah. there's no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Victor Wicked just said... Totally children of the corn. <laughs> so from here on out, I'm going to call you Malachi. <laughs> I am the chosen one. I am the chosen one. He who walks between the rows chose me. Uh, wildly underrated horror movie, Children of the Corn. Gotta say. Yes. Linda yes, Hamilton. Is. Can't remember what the dude's name was. Great kid cast. You. Here's the thing about kids. They suck. They're kids creepy. Are dumb. They're just generally, I mean, my kids are great, but everyone else's kids suck. They're stupid. <laughs> Kid actors are the worst. But oh, yeah. Children of the Corn was full of really great kid actors. Blew me away. Like, yeah. I'm sure between takes, they were just monsters, but they all sat still when they were supposed to. They all murdered their parents when they were supposed to. Exactly. What more, exactly. Can you ask for? I mean, what more could you ask from children? I mean, <laughs> kill us the parents. You know what? I'm going to go insulting, but it's only in fun, okay? Oh, please. Poltergeist 2. <laughs> the priest uh, in Poltergeist 2. Poltergeist 2. The reverend. Oh, yes. Children, come with me. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. That, that's children. not true. You don't look like that. But That's just another hat reference. I'm sorry. You have a hat on. I can't help but think of hats. No, no. Um, it's all good. I mean, we got to have, you know, part of the reason I, I decided to wear this and, and not wear pants was just to have a conversation. <laughs> I mean, so when you stood up earlier and you put your hat over your, your waist as you said, yeah, it moved, was, I it didn't was realize. Huh? Yeah. Okay. You know, it, it doubles as a hat rack. I mean, you know, got to. <laughs> doubles as a hat rack. <laughs> oh my gosh yeah um i, I want to go back to the idea of being in porn again yeah i i haven't been able to stop thinking about that since i brought it up earlier so i'm sorry everything we've been talking about it's just been like underneath um <laughs> porn has been underneath everything we've been talking about <laughs> i don't I'll... think i could do it i don't i like i, I feel like i would be like no. Yeah, like pumping myself up, like yeah, and getting a fluffer in to make sure I was all pumped up when I started. My nerves started showing, but yeah. I feel like when it was go time, I'd just be like, Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There was a, there was a show on HBO or Cinemax or something like that at one time, and uh, it, that was exactly what it was. It was this guy running this porn business, mm -hmm. and they had a guy come in, very similar. He's all pumped up, ready to go. And he gets in a room and it's an old man sitting there with a camera in this studio, of course, you know, where they actually shoot real porn. But he's like, OK, you've got a trial for me. Get it hard. Yeah, he's like right here. Yeah, just pull it out. Here, here's a magazine if you need it. OK, go ahead and get up. And it, I mean, it was very. Did you raise your voice a few octaves? <laughs> he's all, get it up now, son. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> calling him son a lot. Get on a set. You're you're gonna get this on the set. You you have to have it up, and ready to go. Oh my god! Um, but uh, never nevertheless, I I used to have a porn name, 
and uh, you know, back in uh, before I met Stephanie and uh, was a traveling musician. Uh, that would that would be what I would tell girls. I was a uh, porn star. Oh, really? They would say, I'd be like, yeah, my name was Long, Miles Long. And you'd be surprised how many women wanted to go back on the bus and see proof. Really? I feel like that would just be the biggest. They're like, okay, prove it, mother. I know but you, you're like, like a two step. They wanted to see video of it. They didn't, you know, it didn't end up with me getting laid ever. It was just they wanted to see video. <laughs> they wanted to see the porn tape? Yes. <laughs> That's that doesn't speak highly of you. <laughs> no, it failed miserably. <laughs> They're like photo or didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, proof, proof. Where's your creds? I need, I need proof of this. Um, let's see. How do the Leos react to your driving? If you don't mind me asking. What the hell is going on? Um, apparently there's some driving discussion in. Ooh. Yeah. Great, great driving. Uh, Stephanie says she just laughed and laughed. So you used exactly. the line on her. This is true. This is true. I had to I had to reinvite her to come back to the bus, and it it took a lot of convincing. And even then, you know, the it was. Uh, How I many people that. did you try this line out on? Because this several. several. What I mean, you'd be surprised what you can do when you have a tour bus. Is right. That you? Right. That, and if you get them on the bus, you kind of count that as a success. <laughs> is this like the episode of It's Sunny in Philadelphia? Uh, it's always sunny in Philadelphia when about the boat. Like, just getting them on the boat, <laughs> then they can't say no. You're in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> it's like this weird, sinister, like, rape vibe. It, it, nothing like that at all. You get on there and it's all these guys staring at at the one chick. It, it, was, it was awful. That's, that's horrible. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, yeah, Robert, you're right, man. Uh, <laughs> Viagra would be the only way, I think, to get through that stuff. You know what? <laughs> For better or worse, never tried Viagra. Like, not once. No. Not once. I had, I used to work with this girl who, out of nowhere, she must have tried it with her, her boyfriend the night before, but out of nowhere, she was just like, have you ever had sex on Viagra? It's amazing. Like, out of nowhere. I was just like, I didn't know we were there with our relationship. Now, did she take the Viagra or did he? No, he didn't. Oh, okay. Okay. So I was just like, um, no, I've never, I never thought about it before. That's like, we're at work. Why are you telling me this at work? <laughs> like there's a leap that has to be made from, Oh, how's the weather? Yeah. No, I watched a really great episode of blah, blah last night. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, have you taken Viagra for your cock? Like there's <laughs> a leap that has to be made, but, I don't know. I that, feel like there's some steps in between that she missed. That's all I'm saying. She she was just very excited about it, obviously. You know? <laughs> she also did a whole lot of this. She did um uh I I've ha uh I used to work with this guy who always tried to uh, have sex with me and I just never would because he was married. I'm like <laughs> Okay. I feel and... like I feel like you're like throwing the gauntlet. You're like challenging me to try <laughs> Why would you say that? Like, what? I don't understand why you're telling me this. And she, but it wasn't just like once, which is would have been just like a weird aside. It was sure. like repeatedly. Like, no, I used to, you know, I, there's this friend who who I worked with, and he would always try to have sex with me, even though he's married, and I would never do it. I feel like she was, you know, putting it yeah, out there. That's she's like, but I mean, don't you dare think about even asking me to <laughs> right. as she's as she's unbuttoning her shirt. Because I and, totally wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just yeah. had him with the uh, the rip off jumpsuit. <laughs> How did you know I wore those? That's like a regular thing for me. Well, yeah, I just I, grab at the hips and just yank off. Yeah, it's and, great. In the speedo, and you're just. <laughs> <laughs> I love the dancing too. That's great. Um, Zachary is saying a buddy of his once told him that two dollars at Coke would make you harder than a diamond. Viagra's got nothing on that. Two dollars of Coke? Damn. I feel like Coke should be more expensive than that. I, I never had any of that cheap, but you never had Coke before? No, no, I have. I, I oh. never had any that cheap. It was Oh that, right. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. That, that would Absolutely. be Yeah. That's weird. Um 
Yeah. I, I, Facebook, I, the Inferno, search up Limbo Layer 1 on the app. I don't know what that is. Oh, yeah. That is the uh, the entry point to the, the uh, ginormous Facebook group, which is uh, filled with different categories of uh, debauchery. What? Yeah. You see, you, you miss it. You, you, you and uh, your keep off the lawn attitude has really got you separated. <laughs> First of all, get off my fucking lawn. You and your fucking young kids and your hippie haircuts. Are you as old as I am? Probably. <laughs> what is that? You're all coy about it. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> so just a a key bump. There's no way a key bump would get you hard. I did a line mm-hmm. to finish my uh, my Ouija board. I lost the camera for a second there. Yeah, <laughs> the Ouija board up there. So I got. A, you're going to be coming out here with a bunch of other friends uh, mm-hmm. next month, and yes. we're going to perform a wonderful ritual. That's all yeah. I'll say about it. However, I did get a brand new ritual implement that I wanted to show you that I was really mm-hmm. stoked about. It's really kind of cool. So th- there's a lot of different ritual implements and a lot of different places. I-, I find that it doesn't really matter what you use as long as it resonates with you as an individual. Um, and so it could be a piece of paper tacked on a wall for a sigil of Baphomet, or it could be um, a-, a chattering monkey with uh, the little symbols for your bell, if that's what you know does it for you. I got this... Uh, through the uh, intertubes, as they are known. Uh, and it's a, just a Tibetan prayer oh. bell, right? But it's got, like, all this really great engraving inside and, like, the little face. You can pick its nose. Um, just some really good, <laughs> you know, great stuff. However, check out this sound, okay? Just check this. I mean, it... And I don't, I don't know if it comes through in the mic, but it comes through in the room. It's... That's awesome. It just carries. It's so great. I just deafened it. But anyway, that's what I'm going to be nice. using for our little thing, a thing, a thing that we're going to be doing. <laughs> David says dragon dildo. We were just <laughs> talking about that before the show. Not the dragon yeah. dildo, though that came up that, into it. How could it not? Yeah, yeah. But um, we were talking about there is a market, a vacuum in satanic ritual implementation. No one's hand carving or hand crafting phalluses. That's the... <laughs> Think of every Satanist in the world would want a beautifully handcrafted satanic phallus. It doesn't have to be like gross or obscene, just something that would resonate with our collective aesthetic, if that could even be a thing. Like this is like missing, right? I've totally. never heard of it. Totally. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, doesn't have to be anything veiny. I mean, it just be it just, <laughs> some nice symbols. on it. And... First of all, if it's not veiny, it's not realistic and I can't buy into it. Okay. Suspension <laughs> of disbelief and all. Yeah. Whatever. I need veins. <laughs> everybody. I, I mean, everybody's different, but uh, you know, <laughs> ribbed for your pleasure, but, but uh, you know, the, it, some, some really nice symbols, some carving. I mean, it, it could really do well. Some nice varnish. Yeah. And it doesn't even have to be, su- like, to your point, it doesn't have to be super realistic. Right. Just, you know, in, in the, in, you know, air quotes, in the spirit of the phallic symbol. I, I don't know. I just feel like it could be pretty damn amazing. Now, I say this and some asshat is going to make a leve one with like a leve head at the end. I already <laughs> see it happening. Please don't do it. That, that, no one's going to buy that. That's the weirdest fucking stupidest thing ever. <laughs> However, a Wes Vanderpool one with the head on the end. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You got you got to have the uh, the chin the the chin music going on though. I mean that's that's where you get the uh, the pleasure spot. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, CJ hashtag veiny ritual dildos. <laughs> <laughs> On sale now, right? Matt. Oh, how's it going, Matt? He's all phalluses by I am veiny. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though, I mean it's funny and it's stupid because in our heads we're all still eleven years old. But like, it's that's a really great business model that no one. And if I could do wood crafting, I would, <laughs> that sounded really weird. If I had nunchuck skills and computer hacker skills and wood crafting skills, I would be an yeah. awesome. 
you, you, you would have a job interview in a tuxedo. I could see it. <laughs> I would have a, a very bright future in the food service industry for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely would. <laughs> so weird. Um, yeah. CJ so, says that Inferno is still better than r slash Satanism on Reddit. Isn't Reddit um, like a conspiracy, cons conspiracy theory like place? Isn't that like where just people are just crazy? Uh, Reddit? Well, I, I thought that was Florida, but, but yeah, <laughs> Reddit too, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, well, <laughs> well, Florida, man, I mean. <sighs> uh, Lauren says, no, uh, you're on Reddit. Uh, that's not helping your case. <laughs> just saying uh, um oh, nice. all right so what else can we talk about we've got we got some time left yeah r slash yeah, I mean, garbage there you go joe <laughs> uh oh hey you know what we don't i often complain about satanists i don't often champion or you know mutually admire other satanists and this is something that you know, the organization is seen as a mutual admiration society. So yeah. maybe we could just sort of, you know, give examples of what we think are, you know, good people in our kind. What do you think? Yeah. Sure. All right. You want to lead? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tag you it. Damn it all to hell. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there's uh, somebody that I'm, I'm super proud to, to know virtually and, and hopefully soon will know in the flesh, as it were, is uh, Mr. Darren Deanside. Oh, he yeah. out on tour this week, or this week, this year. Right. Touring the entire country is going to be stopping in our town. I know he's going to be close to you guys. And, yeah. I mean, that's that's going to be great. I'm right. Super stoked to get to see the man himself uh, do his thing, you know. Reverend Darren D. said he has two shows that are within driving distance of me. And so I'm going to – I'm not going to give him an option. Like I'm going to stay in his hotel room. <laughs> I'm going to like be at the foot of his bed when he wakes up. <laughs> Even if he tells you – Are you awake you... yet? <laughs> You're awake? Okay. Just continually stand over his bed. Yeah. Are you sleeping? <laughs> Is that how you sleep? It's so cool. Hey, thanks, Joe, man. I appreciate it. Um, he says, you guys rock, but I'm pretty sure he meant me, not not you. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, honestly, I rude, but... am the only one that actually rocked. Ever, you know? <laughs> but it, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, you see so, a million faces. Yeah. Rock them all. Every one of them. No, Darren yeah. Deeside's a great one. I, I've had the privilege of hanging out with him and recording with him and just drinking nice. with him i mean he's just a solid dude he's one of those people that every once in a while we're just texting back and forth randomly because that's what you do when you find people you like um here's someone i'd really like um adam cardone Remember yes. Adam cardone I, I i i was first exposed to him as a magician and then met him in person had a great time he gave he he led me over we were in the black house he led me over to a table and he was like hey you gotta try some head cheese and I was like, didn't I hear about that in Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Like, I'm not sure I want to try any type of food that was mentioned in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> and he was like, no, it's great. And I had like a fucking hunk of it. And I wanted to puke. Like, it was so gross. I choked it down because I'm a goddamn professional. But I wanted to puke. I, mama didn't raise no bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I had cheese like the best of them. I just don't like it. <laughs> That's that's how I, that's exactly what I referred to as uh, going down on on women too. I'm just like, is it time for head cheese again? <laughs> oh, mama didn't teach. You. <laughs> well, mama taught me right. You're done. <laughs> Pull the stash out of the way. And... Uh, yeah. Um, well, so uh, yeah, I and... think Adam Cardone's great. Then I learned he was a musician as well, which is awesome. And he's a massive gamer, which is awesome. So just all around, he hits all those those points. Just super cool guy. Got tons of style, tons of skill and talent to back up uh, anything that anyone can claim of him. And he's super just approachable and not, you know, not a braggart, not a douchebag. He's just a super cool guy. Um, Lauren is saying, uh, thanks, Robert. Uh, e. Grain. Yeah. So Magister E. Grain. I, she, if you're, if you were ever listening to Nine Cents, 
I had her on a few episodes. Uh, she did an essay reading of hers, and then she did a short segment. Um, I think uh, it, this was years ago, but it, it like it spro it it influenced her. I'm using that. She didn't say that. Um, to because she started um, the Wicked Witch show right after that, and so I'm assuming that her doing that sort of got it running in her head that oh you know what this is actually kind of cool again maybe I'll try this and then she went off with it so um, yeah she's good people too you know another one oh here it's your turn you oh oh no I I, um, I I haven't met really all all that many uh, Satanists in person but the uh, somebody else I am going to meet when I get to come out there is uh, is uh, Mr. Anderson Storm Anderson right right. Yeah, I, I, we are set up to get uh, tattoos while we're out there as well. So, uh, are you really going to get the Mighty Ducks tattooed on you? Well, you were supposed to keep that a secret. But I yeah. mean, yeah, he's satanic Mighty Ducks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it was e either that or your face, and and I thought your face may take a little longer, you know, and and yeah, that's the look that that right there. I mean, that is exactly why. <laughs> oh my gosh, Joe, you're killing me. Um, I don't know why I'm saying this, but please stop sending money. <laughs> <It's just laughs> um, um, did you name someone? What were you just talking about? Uh, uh, Storm Anderson. Okay, yeah. Storm yeah. is awesome. Uh, I've had him do a bunch of the tattoos on me. What are you getting? Are you allowed to say? I am. Uh, I don't know yet. I, I you asked... don't know yet? No, that's the <laughs> exciting part. I, I I told him I I wanted a an original of his a, a for him to design uh, something to honor the Church of Satan, mm -hmm. and uh, that is uh, I, I haven't decided where I'm getting it yet. I, I thought maybe you know like right up here, do some Mike Tyson kind of stuff, or yeah. but uh, yeah, I have no idea yet. Um, it's like Joe and Robert are in a pissing contest robert is just like one-upping robert is on price is right and uh <laughs> joe is like i think it's uh 57 for that uh lawn chair and uh joe robert's like 57 and one cent <laughs> 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 he's just totally one-upping that's really funny um you know, and the, the, the beautiful thing is they're pissing money. I, I mean, if I could piss money, I would be everywhere. <laughs> Golden money showers for everyone. Golden money showers. Wow, that, that would kind of hurt, you think. You know? I had a... Uh, I, okay, so the, remember, remember the beginning when I was talking about the porn? The guy <laughs> that was getting me... I'm going back to porn because it's been underneath the whole time. Um, the guy that... Uh, Brett, I named. Brett. No one knows him, so it's okay to say his name. Um, he uh, he used to tell me that it was his greatest um, joy in life when taking a shower with one of his girlfriends to turn the water up really hot and then just pee on them and they don't know about it. <laughs> what? Because it's so hot. <laughs> they don't know that a little warm stream is going down their leg. It's already going down with the shower. So, <laughs> I was just like... So what is wrong so with you, man? So if the water gets uh, if the water gets too hot, then I, I should I should just jump out of the shower right away and instead of wait to see what you do. There are more problems if you and I are standing facing each other in a shower. Our wives are just like, what are they doing in there? What the fuck is going on? I didn't realize they got there. They their relationship was here, and then suddenly it's here. They're, they just leaped. They just really picked it just up. Like, I've never had a married man try to fuck me in the shower before. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a challenge? Come the throne. <laughs> so weird. Thank you, CJ. Oh, my God. Oh. Um, uh, he donated a dollar, and that's going right in your crotch. Uh, it better. I mean, I'm, I'm shaking it awfully hard. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. All right, uh, another person that I think is uh, really solid people. Antoine, thanks for joining us, man. Way across the pond. Um, Diva Dave D's across the pond, too. You guys are just uh, two shakes of a lamb's tail away from each other. Um, that, was a, that was a Pulp Fiction 
quote if you guys didn't catch that <laughs> i feel like i have to like name my quotes because i work with people that are much younger than me and they don't have any idea the quotes i pull out I, ever i always feel like the total asshat. i'm like that would have been a great quote if you knew movies like if you knew film <laughs> if you knew anything about the 90s you would have totally <laughs> laughed they like, just think you're this weird guy. Like, yeah. why does he keep saying stuff? He says weird stuff, then stares at us. He's <laughs> <laughs> looking at us <laughs> like we should know something. <laughs> He's like, why is he talking about lamb's tails? I don't. What's? I don't get it. That's weird. Um, Say what again? Say what again? <laughs> <laughs> Look at the big brain. Oh, you're pissed every time my hand touches brain. I'm, I'm, I'm fuck. I totally messed it up. Okay, anyway, I'm not gonna quote Paul Peter. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah. yeah, another person, Storm's great. His wife is fantastic. Renee, she's a wonderful, yeah. person. wonderful person. Um, uh, Lauren already mentioned, uh, Milton Kruver, Warlock Kruver. Uh, she's a solid person, solid dude, really dig him. Um, he was one of those individuals that it, I, I enjoy collaborating with him, um, because mm -hmm. he's just. He's so just kind of chill, you know, not only, and here's the, the other thing I've run across a lot of different Satan <laughs> back in my day. I've run across a number of Satan. Uh, and some of them are just super cool people. And some of them are pretty pretentious. Most of them are pretty pretentious, but, um, every once in a while you run into someone that's just like really cool and willing to just collaborate with you. So do you yeah. remember um, the uh, From the Devil's Lips lip sync video contest that I ran last year? Yes. Or the year before last or whenever it was? Mm -hmm. I had so much fun doing that, but no one wanted to participate. No one. <laughs> I reached out to so many people and they're all just like, no, I'm not going to look like an idiot on camera for you. Yeah. Like, it, it's fun. Like, it's just for fun. Why would you not want to just have fun? Yeah. Totally horrible. I mean, you know, there. I look like an idiot anyway. Why not do it on camera and make people laugh? I mean, seriously. And did you see Aden Ardennes? Another no. solid dude. He did um, Sweet Transvestite from Rocky Horror Picture Show. No. Dressed as Frankenfurter. It was amazing. I had uh, pe I awesome. had. Okay, so I'd never told him this. I had. I probably should have told him this. <laughs> um, I had a third party uh, distribution service for social media, like reach out. They're like, we love your video. We would love to promote it and share it for you. You know, we'll, we'll cut you in on any of the proceeds. And I just ignored them. Cause I always ignore all the promotion emails my channel gets. Right. You'd be surprised at how many people are just like, Hey, let me promote you. And you know, you're going to make X amount of money. I'm just like, well, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do this. Or people that like, I've had at least three people reach out to me. They're like, Hey, I want to produce a show based around Satanism. And I'd love to have you, um, you know, uh, uh, try out for the uh, host. And I was just like, no, thanks. No, <laughs> I, just have no I have no desire for anything. Like I have a job, I have a profession. Like that's, <laughs> uh, this is for me and for fun. And so we can sit and drink. <laughs> Not for me to look like an ass on the public stage. You know? <laughs> Call it unsolved Satan. <laughs> <laughs> Just go to like small towns, place. like graffiti and stuff. <laughs> Is it Satanism? This picture. <laughs> Call your local authorities. <laughs> we totally should. That would actually, I do that. Um, I got to reach out to Matt though, because he has experience in that stuff, right, Matt? Uh, you got to help us start up this. <laughs> unsolved satanism show of ours now um zachary is asking any thoughts on the satanic sins effect during light conversations it feels like everyone knows them but doesn't know why what oh. they don't know why they know them huh right, i'm not i'm not sure i fully understand i will tell you this about satanic sins um tongue-in-cheek so please don't take them seriously they're the doctor was hounded by primarily non-Satanists, but Satanists alike, saying, look, you've got the nine Satanic statements. Where's your sins? If you're a religion, if you're a church, you have to have sins. And he's like, you're missing the point. We're Satanists. We celebrate the sins. He's like, okay, but if I have to write sins to placate everyone, they're going to be tongue-in-cheek sins, and here they are. 
Um, <laughs> so, and I think that's like straight up in his autobiography. Like that's not just me telling tales out of school. Yeah, I think it's it all is just that. like tongue and fucking cheek. However, they are relevant, you know, for if you want to be like an honest, real individual moving through life and have any sense of authority, uh, then you should heed at least keeping them in the back of your mind because they are they're not really sins so much as um, uh, rules of thumb that are, you know, can can help you uh, from showing your ass. Ultimately, I think. Yeah, but, more uh, like more guidelines it's like it kind of like street laws they're just suggestions you know right. the red light is a suggestion <laughs> right unless, <Stephanie? laughs> unless you're in amsterdam then it's a clarion call <laughs> yes it is it is a siren song if you see a red light you're just like boobs uh, <laughs> well one thing one thing i i find to be ever so truthful, and I'm sure everybody's like this. I'm sure people I work with think it of me, God, but hot, uh, stupidity, stupidity. Yeah. Are you pinching your nipples? <laughs> I was <laughs> pulling my shirt off because I'm, like, I'm sweating right now. It's hot. It's so hot in here right now. <laughs> hot. Hands. Go on. Go. Get in the hot tub. Hot tub. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get in the hot tub. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta get in the hot tub! Yeah! <laughs> uh, sorry, that's old SNL. Nice, nice. But I, I, I find myself struggling with it, with that quite a bit, is with uh, work and stupidity. Mm -hmm. And uh, working in technology, I, I have high opinions of folks I work with, and I find that sometimes um, I'm like, wow, how did you get here? <laughs> And it, yeah. it, it's it's very hurtful, you know. You see these see people who just don't uh, don't think, and that it happens in everyday life, you know. It's, well, this is the weird thing because there's there's a couple different things going on in most people's heads. You know, you have common sense, which sure. surprisingly a lot of people don't have any of. You have intelligence, like book smarts, yeah. which. Those who do have it don't seem to have a whole lot of common sense or street smarts, which is what I think most people perceive you as stupid by not having. It's just yeah. this basic idea of how to interact with other people or the world around you. And if you can't do that, then you look fucking stupid, you know? I mean, just straight up dumb. Yeah, I, you know, I mean, if, if I first meet somebody and uh, they can't carve a shank out of a toothbrush, they're just fucking morons. I mean, if they can't put a shank in their prison wallet, <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> carve a shank? Where are you pulling that? <laughs> it's not where I'm pulling it out. It's where I'm sticking it in. <laughs> uh, right from your prison wallet to his face. <laughs> oh man yeah sack flower <laughs> i so i'm gonna edit some of those clips that we've been uh making it's been a uh, while uh, yes it's, it's total inside joke. It's conversation i don't want to have that one for everyone um yeah uh, do you have your uh ritual attire i do i do i uh finally finally it arrived from uh england i i think is where oh really yeah yeah, I, I, I can't hey, remember the name of the store, but I think you told me about it. Um, what, Asp? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. But uh, yeah, it looks very nice, ready ready to get worn and, uh, you know. Don't wash it. Under. No one likes a short robe. Oh, Don't damn. let it shrink up. No one I'm likes to seeing some your ankles. Then. <laughs> I thought it was cut off at the waist and you're good, but I, you know. Wait a second. I want to talk about this really quick because I think this is funny. What would be, what do you think would be a deal breaker if someone came over to join you in a ritual, like if they were wearing, what would be a deal breaker? Because I've, I've, I've done public rituals with people. They're just in like a black t-shirt, basically. It's like a, you know, black shirt, black pants, right. not a big deal. Yeah. However, if I could see ankle socks, yes. I could not do it. No ankle socks. No, no. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you're if you're wearing cargo shorts, <laughs> or, uh, if you if 
you are wearing a police the band t-shirt or a sting t-shirt that's an automatic shanking with uh, the prison shank i mean automatically <laughs> but uh yeah i you know cargo shorts it's cargo something that, shorts okay but what if what if the cargo if. shorts were on underneath a regular robe then would it matter um it, it depends are they uh, can i see the wrinkles See, there it is. Yeah, you could. Do they, do they have white ass legs that are going to be distracting from the ritual? <laughs> I call like... upon the darkness of the judge. Of... Oh, your ankles again. Again. Jesus We've Christ. talked about this, Steve. <laughs> if it looks like Chewbacca is living under the robe, then, you know, that that might be kind of a no. You know, or... <laughs> Yeah, David, a bathrobe. That would be... <laughs> If they just come like sporting in like a big pink bathrobe, like what? Let's do this thing. <laughs> We're in the actually. The I gotta be honest. If you own it, like if you if you walked up in like pink slippers and a pink bathrobe into a satanic ritual chamber, and you were just like, "I'm gonna hail some Satan." Yeah, I I kind of want to see where it goes. Good I mean, if you, if you come out with uh, just exuding confidence, yeah, I mean, it'd be kind of hard to turn you away at that point. But. Okay, how good? Let's say that, and a shower cap. Uh, I feel like that might be going too far, right? It might, it, it might be, it might be. It depends on the confidence of the shower cap and what's under it. Do they have curls? You know, curlers under that thing? Yeah, if they're shaved bald, they're just fucking with you at that point. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, yeah. if they have some curlers yeah. and and some shit going on, then it's like, okay, okay. Yeah. You know, you <laughs> you really needed to hail Satan. You, you didn't have time to get dressed and take your curlers. You think this perm is gonna set on its own? I need the help of Satan. <laughs> <laughs> to the dark lord, giveth me the curls. Yeah, I agree, Zachary. Man, uh, ankle socks are should be punishable by death. <laughs> you know what's worse than ankle socks? White tube socks with sandals? <laughs> Any socks with sandals. But, I mean, that's really bad, actually. That's worse than what I was going to say. I was going to say white-rimmed sunglasses. They oh. get me every time. Only assholes wear white. And there's nothing wrong with being an asshole. I'm an asshole. But I have self-respect enough not to wear white-rimmed glasses while I'm doing the assholing. I mean, yeah. It's yeah just, have you think back to every person you've ever seen wearing white-rimmed sunglasses. Yeah, they they always deserved a throat punch. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they deserved the 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 drill instructor point hand right to the throat. Oh man! Um, a, when you when you wear your ritual robe, are you going to go regimental? Are you going to be n naked underneath? I I've I've thought about this a lot, and uh, <laughs> do tell. Do tell. Here comes the gory detail. No, I, I, I figured uh, no. You know, I, I probably would wear my uh, my darkest shirts and uh, you know some some pretty nice attire. So when the robe comes off, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm still bringing it. When so. you derobe, are you going to pose? Well, isn't that part yeah. of the ritual? I I thought that was the very end. <laughs> Yeah, the final bell is rung. Yes. And then everyone's just like, <laughs> together. <laughs> we have to practice. Okay, everyone, it's on three, okay? Not after three, on three. <laughs> One, two. <laughs> Fucking Steve, you're off again! Every time, Steve! Why are you wearing those socks? Steve's the worst! <laughs> I feel sorry for someone named Steve watching this. I'm not talking yeah, about you, buddy. You're it's great. Right, Steve. <laughs> it's the other you're Steve. all right, Steve. <laughs> Are you sweating? I'm sweating so bad right now. I, I'm not. I mean, I, I'm in uh, the lowest layer of hell, I feel like, in Vanderpool Manor. So it's... Uh... <laughs> my, my boys are at the ninth circle of hell right now. They're just like <laughs> steeping. <laughs> Did you guys get a little warm weather out there today? Uh, no, it's... Uh, we had a... Well, yes, it was warm, but it, we had this massive storm. And so now it's super muggy. Mm. And just sitting here in a... <laughs> fucking vest uh, <laughs> just like I, I've never felt more like fucking uh, um, the fucking yeah. 
the 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 kid, the name, the the kid with the name. That guy with the yeah, name yeah. and the kid. Uh-huh. Never mind, it'll come to me. I'll shout it. See, this is this is why you uh, this is why you uh, shouldn't wear pants. I mean, that's that's why I never wear pants. That's actually a really good idea. Hold on, <laughs> shimmy out. <laughs> oh man, um, can I? Can I ask you something really quick? Sure. Ask, ask me. When you're watching pornography. Yes. I'm going to get, give the medical definition here, or the medical term, pornography. When okay. you are When you are experiencing, because you don't really watch it, you experience it. When you experience pornography, do you get pushed out of the moment when you see a butt pimple? depends on who it's on and how ready it is to burst. <laughs> okay. What if, what if, it's, what if it's like an ingrown hair that's like furiously like, like red and like, you know, it's like, I, I have a hard time looking at that stuff. I, yeah. Yeah. I've, I've noticed, uh, with quality of, uh, with quality mm-hmm. of movies, uh, you could find folks who who don't shave often, and then they're they got the the heat red yeah. heat pumps or whatever going on, and that's yeah, that's a big downer. It makes me think something else is happening there, and can't I I don't want to experience that. <laughs> I have a hard time um, experiencing it myself. It burns. <laughs> yeah, Lawrence says wax. That's a good idea. We need there, to, uh... yeah. That's the word. It's not bird. It's wax. Wow, damn it. The word. Off again. <laughs> bird. It was so close. Bird. Hey, have you heard the word? Um, <laughs> the red banana hammock. Black mantis under the robe. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. That- it depends on the temperature. It's going to be May, and so at the end of May, so it's going to be the beginning of spring. It's going to be warm. Yeah. I mean, so- with that many people in that small of a space. So perhaps it is something that we all need to get uh, matching sigil Baphomet uh, banana hammocks, you know, and uh, we all just uh, as hey, a, afterwards as we, we all out. take a picture and be like the banana hammocks of Satanism, <laughs> and I'll put it as my Facebook profile picture. That would be great. <laughs> Fucking... That would be great. I have to get them all swinging at once, though. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst. <laughs> Uh, you... All right. What else? What else we got? You got anything underneath your cap there? Let me see. Oh, let's see. No, no. Nine and three quarters. Um, so, what uh, what have you really been into in movies lately? Are you are you getting into any new movies? Uh, are so, you anticipating any new movies? Um, I'm gonna go see Avengers Endgame tomorrow morning. Me too. Um, Oh, nice. Uh, I'm going. I've been. I've been sort of buried in Game of Thrones for the past couple of weeks. Ah, uh, just like we we haven't gotten into that yet. Uh, all right, we'll get keep... the fuck off the show because it's it's about to turn into a Game of Thrones show. I can't believe I, I, there's no excuse for it. It's it's a brilliant, brilliant series. It's so so goddamn good. It's like just my perfect cup of tea. Anyway, I've been digging that a lot lately. Um, nice. Uh, we we watch like we have a subscription to Shutter, which is a horror film streaming service like Netflix, mm-hmm. except it's horror films. Um, they're not all great, but we've been doing a lot of that lately. Just like bef- you know, we're we're having our kids take showers and get ready for bed and stuff, and it's like just a f- you know like an hour or something we have to just chill before we crash. And we yeah. just turn something on and just kind of watch it. And if we don't finish it in one night, we'll watch it the next night. And a lot of horror movies. Like I'm I'm a big horror fan I, I i'm really really excited to see three from hell what uh the rob zombie oh yeah 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 I yeah, I the name. yeah see he's almost done uh, with the editing so it's, oh uh, really yeah the the scenes i've seen are they're they're looking mighty nice have i yeah. talked to you about 31 yet i don't think so have you seen 31 no rob so. zombie slick no, I haven't seen that. Okay, one, so the first time I saw it, it came after um, the Lords of Salem, which I love. Yeah, absolutely love it. 
It came after Lords of Salem. It has a lot of the same actors that he uses in his other films, including Lords of Salem. Um, mm-hmm. And so I watched it and it was just a steaming hot pile of garbage. It was so, <laughs> it was so bad. I had flames, flame, there, there were flames, flames were coming out of my ears, hot burning. A clue <laughs> reference for people who don't know. Um, no, it was a big ass pile of garbage. Terrible film. And then, like, years went by, I think like two years, and it was on Shudder, and I was just like, fuck it, I'm going to watch it. And it wasn't, it's not good, but it wasn't as bad as I remember it being. And I think it's because the proximity of the characters to the other films that I love so much Mm -hmm. carried expectation with them. And I, I tainted the film with my expectation uh, so much that it t- ended up being much worse in my eyes than it actually was. So, I don't know. That's what happens when you pull your taint out in a movie. I mean, it uh, <laughs> <laughs> just ruins everything. Yeah, David mentioned scary stories to tell in the dark. That's Del oh. Toro, right? Guillermo Del yeah. Toro? Mm-hmm. That's going to be great. <laughs> yeah, some damn good stuff. Oh, so good. Um, I thought Tusk was overrated, Lauren. Um, I enjoyed it. Uh it was just a little bit too... I don't know which was first, uh, Human Centipede or Tusk, but it was derivative of Human Centipede in my experience. And so I, I didn't... I couldn't attach myself to it as much as I wanted to. Like, I grew up with Clerks, Mallrats, um, Dogma, uh, Chasing Amy, um, yeah, these really great Kevin Smith films, that View Askew films, that I genuinely love... And I just, Tusk did not hit home for me. So, I don't know. It was okay. It just wasn't great. Yeah. Um, do you do you get really excited about movies? And uh, I, I do this really annoying thing that, that annoys the hell out of Stephanie all the time. Is uh, when movies are coming out, I, I read all I can about them. Uh, you know, even if somebody's like, oh, spoilers, whatever. I'm like, I don't, I don't give a fuck. I'm still going to go see the movie, even if I know frame by frame what's going to wow. happen. And uh, so it, I've been doing that with Endgame. Right. Oh, really? Don't spoil anything on here. Oh, no, no, I wouldn't do that. Uh, so I, you I already know all the secrets? I don't know for sure, but I think so. Oh, okay. I heard I it was great. And so I want to go in blank. Yeah, yeah I do. I do think it's going to be an amazing movie uh regardless of how much i know but uh yeah <laughs> lauren says it was before the butt movie <laughs> <laughs> if i saw it before the butt movie i would have felt differently about it i think honestly um i love you know what i love chasing amy for one scene i mean i thought the whole film was great mm-hmm. um, oh you know what the, the other one um where where Ben Affleck was the single dad. Um, oh yeah. Oh, what was that called? I have the freaking DVD. Uh, uh, Jersey Girl, Jersey. great film. Yeah. That that show got me a tear in. That was a great great. And I don't care what anyone says. Ben Affleck is the best Batman. Okay, so um, <laughs> Chasing Amy was great because it talked about fisting, and I'd only had one experience. I that same house that I lived in, right? Um, the the porn house (laughs) i'm going right back to the beginning again we can't get out of this loop and we're back (laughs) um there was a girl who worked as uh she was a friend of a friend um and she was the third longest person living in this shithole uh and she was only there for like a month before she moved out but massive drug addict but she worked in this nursing home and stuff all that's irrelevant um, just to sort of color the story. But my friend told me that she was into boys and girls, but only if they would fist her. And so I was just like, what? You can do that? Because <laughs> I had no idea. I was right out of high school. I'd never heard of it. I didn't know anything about it. I was just like, doesn't that's insane. And then I saw fucking Chasing Amy. And there's that scene where Ben Affleck's like, doesn't that hurt? And I was just like, that's me! That's, that's me! what I'm thinking! <laughs> <laughs> that was me! I was like, how is that possible? She's like, ah. <laughs> like, okay. Well, that maybe there wasn't that at the end. That was my own jazz hand flavor. <laughs> yeah, that was, I was just like, oh, wow, that's great. That's That scene is so great. If I see a scene that 
I've experienced in real life, I will love that movie or series more. And another example of that is Blackish. I love Blackish, but I think I love Blackish more because they have scenes in that film that have happened to me. So the <laughs> first scene where um, <laughs> they're at a urinal at work and one dude looks over and then looks like over at the dude's cock and then he looks up and gives him a smile. He's like, hey, how's it going? You know, he's just like chatting with him and looking at him. And they had this big conversation about urinal etiquette of keeping one urinal between you. Yes. I yes. had that experience in the military. I went to take a leak and he was a friend. So it wasn't like invasive or anything, but he sidled up right next to me. And then he just stared at my junk. He was like, you've got a really nice dick. I was like, what are you doing, man? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but what are you doing? <laughs> There, there, there's a guy, there used to be a guy, uh, he was a, a developer that I worked with and you would walk into the bathroom at work. He would be standing at the urinal and it was an all the way back lean no. watching you walk in <laughs> and then he would turn and watch you walk to the urinal and kind of give you a glance. And then if you were done before him, he would, you know, <laughs> walk leaning back the whole time. And then there's some people, this is the thing I don't get. You walk into a restroom, mm -hmm. three urinals, who, what kind of sick asshole goes to the middle urinal? <laughs> Come on. That's playing with fire is what that is. <laughs> He's yeah. like, I want to touch a toe, toe to toe. <laughs> yeah, I, there's I, no I other reason that. to do that. No. And, and these same sick assholes <laughs> will go to the middle sink. Three sinks, they go to the middle. It's like the sink is not as egregious. I don't, I don't even consider this sink. If it's in, I, I do personally because I've seen so many people not wash their hands after using the restroom, and it, it, it just seems like if it's the same people going to the middle urinal, going to the middle sink, it's like you're, you're just scared. You need somebody in here with you to help you through this experience <laughs> of pissing with other men around you. That's what it is. It's like, hey, huddle up guys, huddle up, huddle up. I gotta take a leak. Come here guys. I, I, I need somebody to have my back. Oh, thank you. you need the warmth. Somebody came in. Now someone can... like, give me a massage real quick while I'm doing this. <laughs> a quick massage. <laughs> or it's even worse. You know, you're, you're finally standing there oh, and man. you're, You've really had to pee for a long time. You're peeing and somebody walks up and touches you on the back. You have that one asshole friend that just knows they want to fuck with you. So they walk up and, hey, buddy. <laughs> oh, so my funny. God. I don't like, I don't know how we got on this topic. I don't like <laughs> people who talk while you're Why? taking a leak. Like, that's the worst to me no. like having a conversation and i understand like some people that's just a way for them to break the ice so they feel comfortable to start peeing yeah, yeah. but it's the opposite for me man it'll stop me midstream yeah but every you, time. you've you've experienced the army in all its glory i mean uh every fort stewart test. georgia in the middle of summer and you're sitting on all the toilets that don't have stalls it's yeah. just toilet after toilet yes and yes. the guy comes in and sits down next to you and starts oh. talking oh I mean, it, it re it's like a standoff, you know, like, <laughs> am I going to actually take a dump first or is he going to stop talking? <laughs> yeah. It is. Oh, God. See, and there, as if there's a wall there, I feel like that you can actually have a good conversation if sure. there's space between you, like some barrier. But if you're just like knee to knee, I can't. I can't. Yeah. I don't want to look at you in the eye. Well, I'm trying to drop a dude. And, you know, it's not like a regular, you know, bathroom experience. You've been eating MREs. That yeah. doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's it's part of the exercise routine you go through in the military. I mean, <laughs> getting that out. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm talking about. Um, I don't know. Do we want to do you want to do another random topic before we close it out? Sure. It's Let's... been an hour already. I don't know if you believe. Oh, that. damn. Damn. I'm so, so sweating. I don't want to talk about bathroom stuff anymore. Just want to tell you all good luck. We're all counting on you. <laughs> what is that? Airplane. Oh, gosh. The, you, the guy is sweating, you know, like yeah, it's yeah. just, yeah, that's, that's what you're reminding me of right now. <laughs> Can you see it? Am I glistening? You're a little, a little around Glisten? the top. It's 
looks like sparkles. I, <laughs> I'm a vampire. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Like, holy shit, that, Adam's a vampire. Adam's a vampire. He's been saying he doesn't like him this whole time just to throw us off his vampire scent. <laughs> Um, you know what we do in the shadows is a great show. Like the I, film is great. The TV series, I, the first episode was free. So good. So, nice. so good. I got to get that series. It was just amazing. All right, let's close this out. Let's do it. Close this out by, uh, let's do one last thing. Okay. Okay. One. Um, I, <laughs> one last thing. What, what, where are we? Where are we? Um, what? what <laughs> A book you're reading or you've read recently that you would recommend? What would be a good book that you would recommend? Oh, that is a good one. Um, Do you know how to read? I uh, well, words. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Then you're together. Good. Then you're good. Um, no, I've uh, the last thing I, I was reading, I think, was uh, the Church of Satan. Uh, by Blanche Barton. I, 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 good, I right read now. that the whole way through and I would highly recommend that. Mm-hmm. Um, really, the... Oh my goodness. No One Here Gets Out Alive is kind of my... Uh, my my go-to when I'm just feeling... So uh, good. Feeling dorsey. Yeah. When are you not? Yeah. Anytime. I, I Anytime. like picking it up and just... Flipping to a random chapter and seeing what's happening, you know. You know uh, some random shit right here? Here's yeah. some random shit for you. Mm. Oh my. <laughs> just, I just happen to have a random photo sitting right next to me for no particular reason of Jim Morrison. It's totally <laughs> unplanned. <laughs> totally unplanned. <laughs> <laughs> no, have awesome. you read uh, The Poet in Exile? I talked to you about this, right? When we were, when I was out there? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Great. Yeah, I That's haven't I haven't read that yet. But that, you can borrow it when you come out. I'll give it to you. Definitely. Definitely. Um American Psycho so good, Chris. Oh, I love it so much. Uh no, I just read um <laughs> Did I? Cuz I can't think of the name right now. I am three fingers of high west whiskey in. Um <laughs> What what the fuck did I just read? Oh, um, uh, Magicians of the Gods by Graham Hancock. He was just on, Graham Hancock was just on um, the Joe Joe Rogan Rogan show podcast. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. And he was talking about his new book, like um, about America. That author is amazing. His writing is amazing. And I'm going to do a show about it with Ryan and it's going to be amazing. But I would highly recommend Magicians of the Gods. It's really, really good. I mean, just if you love human history, like actual human history. And here's the, here's the deal. This is why I love it so much. We as human beings make up so much fiction and mythology uh, that is exciting and entertaining and titillating. We write these film scripts that get made into these big blockbusters in order to you know, entertain us. The truth is our own human history is incredibly exciting. It is Full of adventure and degenerate and uh, murder and sex and excitement. And our, our human history is forgotten for entire epics of human existence yeah. spans of time. Um, this is what an epic is. Uh, so that's <laughs> what I love so much about it is that we are a species, as, as Graham Hancock so wonderfully puts it, with amnesia. Who, yeah. We don't know where we come from. We've made up stories to explain those absences but through archaeology and history we can actually discover the truths behind them and what was so great about these ancestors of ours is they laid out so many monumental clues to help us decode who they were that is so thrilling and exciting to me uh, the reality of human experience is what is as a saying this i can't help but enjoy it but just as a sort of history history oh file history file <laughs> i don't know what you would history um, <laughs> that's good uh, hardcore history with dan carlin mr victor suggests dante's inferno is great i got it right here purgatory is good it's not as great and um um oh, what's the last one uh div- I can't remember. I couldn't get. I can get through the first um, few po- like stanzas. Like they're like poems. The whole thing. Mm. Anyway, I can't remember what it's called. Di- I want to say divinity, but it's not. Not very good. Um, Paradiso. That's what it was. Thank you so much, yeah. uh, Lauren. Um, Atlas Babylon. That's some heavy reading. Atlas. Atlas shrugged. Anyway, I don't know what Atlas is. Um, 
Yeah, the Latin version is Paradiso. Paradise is the English translation. So then yeah. um, Graham does kick ass, Robert. Yeah, I guess that's the that's it. I'm a good recommended book. Are you listening to any music right now? Any good music you want to? I, I, I am actually. I uh, just discovered this really kick ass band called Greta Van Fleet. Mm. And uh, if, if you're a big fan of Led Zeppelin, uh, that's oh the all God. girl version, right? No, no, it's uh, it's all all guys, but the, the lead singer sounds like Plant. And uh, oh, I know exactly what you're yeah. talking about. I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's like it, it's real. Good rock. It's Isn't like it like Zeppelin. three brothers or something? I think so. Yeah. 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 They are badass. Old school. Yeah. I like that. Do you like? What do you think about that? Because we could always go to you know Zofo. We can always go back to Black Sabbath. We we can always go back to these eras because the music exists that we love right. so much. Are, are modern bands really giving us anything new by? sort of emulating sounds um from I, I, it depends if, if they're not copying them exactly mm -hmm. uh, i i feel like that they can take a sound that is well liked and that is just pleasant to the ear i mean everybody likes a certain thing better than another and you you Take what fits you. Take what you're passionate about. Take that sound and and drive it further. You know, see where it can go. And maybe instead of ripping off old blues singers, which Zeppelin did it very very well, Rolling Stone uh, did it too. Did yeah. I mean, everybody did back in the mm -hmm. '60s. But to see you know hear new songs being written and then being done in these uh, old styles is really great. Because I mean, all the uh, the the old bands are dying off and uh, there's not many new bands that I'm get too excited about. Yeah. You know what a, a band, uh, it's not even a band. It's just uh, a collaboration between um, Coverdell page, Jimmy page, um, David Coverdell from white snake. That was a great album. Yeah. Page. Yeah. I love that so much. Um, what's your go-to? Uh, oh, let me give a quick shout out to what I'm listening to lately. Yeah. I've been doing a whole lot of <laughs> Sinatra lately. Uh, yes. Specifically because of our intro, um, <laughs> My Way uh, piano uh, tune for this show. But uh, a lot of Sinatra, I, I can't help. But it, the thing is, like, I, I love Sinatra for the, uh, the sort of old school American ballads, and you can't beat his, his vo voice at all. Um, but I can't help doing like a little toe dive into um, Elvis Presley every single time I listen to Sinatra because I feel like I've got to like expose myself because one thing, and this is what people hated about Elvis, but I loved so much, is that he took all these really wonderful old blues and gospel songs and he brought them in with his own sensibility. And you can argue whether it's actually his or his musician's sensibilities or not, but he had the look. He had the okay. voice, and he could goddamn perform. So, like, I just, goddamn it, I love me some Elvis. Uh, I, I do too. I, the coolest thing I, I grew up listening to Elvis. I mean, uh, that uh, Live in Hawaii album was one I would wear out when I was five years old. And uh, the other day, we were sitting here, and uh, my oldest daughter turns on the the radio and uh, turns it to an Elvis channel. And she just yeah. dancing all of getting into Elvis and uh, but uh, you know my go to I have a uh, a Spotify playlist of everything from bluegrass to old country to black metal to death metal. Jeez. I mean everything under the sun it encompasses Eminem and uh, I mean just just a little of everything and uh, the, the, uh, listening to that. Uh, you know, puts me in a real nostalgic place, a, mm -hmm. a place where I really like to be. Uh, and then, you know, at the end of a, a long week, usually, and such as uh, this week has been, I, I, I like to, you know, turn on a, a Willie Nelson mix or, uh, you know, some Johnny Cash or something like that and pour some whiskey and 
sit and listen to those guys uh, sing it up. And, they, you know, Willie has a uh, an album that came out over the winter of all Sinatra songs. I've heard of this. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, it, some of it, you know, some of it I felt like missed a little bit, uh, but it definitely, the whole album captured the spirit of Sinatra and uh, Willie just, he does it like only he can, you know. Dude, maybe Bob, maybe like only he should. Yeah. Did you hear Bob Dylan's country album? I did. So good. Yeah. Oh, so you, uh, good. I don't even like Bob Dylan, but that album rocked. <laughs> oh, it was so good. I I like I like Dylan. Um, I have have you heard his Christmas album? No. This is something uh, my no. my wonderful, lovely wife puts on every Christmas, and uh, we'll play and uh, and she gets so Island uh, Night. Oh yeah, it's, Holy uh, Night. It's uh, Jingle Bells, Jingle <laughs> Bells. You know, and 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 after and when I first heard it, I was like, Oh my God, what is this? And then you know, after a while, you can't get it out of your head. <laughs> <laughs> you just gotta hear it, you know. <laughs> But it, oh man! All right, all right. We should end it there. I I want to talk about some other random stuff, but we're gonna have to stop it. We'll save some stuff for the next 1920 love songs. You know what? The French yes. Antoine talking to you. The French has some really great um, uh, love songs from like the psychedelic 60s era. That uh, just I don't I don't know why, but I just really really kind of dig. And if you get any music from the sort of 60s era. I feel like has just this vibe because what they were doing was paying homage to those old school uh, singer songwriters and sort of trying to bring in a youthful vibe with it. And so you had these really great uh, callback tracks that I don't know, it, just, it, it had an atmosphere to it that I really dug. And I'm not talking about the rock and roll. I'm talking about the singer songwriter type stuff. Um, anyway, we're off. That's it. We got to <laughs> stop at some point. We're going to stop here. Johnny Cash, you can't go wrong with Johnny Cash, of course. Come on, come yeah. on. Uh, we are both in on Sunday. At least I am. Are you in on Sunday? I'm always in on Sunday. Do you know what I'm talking about? No, I, I Sack don't know. Flower. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> okay. You, you're not in. I know you're not in French. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Hi, people. Thank you so much for tuning in to this first <laughs> inaugural episode of. On the Rocks with Wes and Adam, <laughs> uh, with Vanderpool and Campbell. Uh, we'll once, actually have, once he gets out here, we're going to actually record a proper intro and outro. This is just a quick thrown together one so we could do this show. Um, you know, that's just what we're we're doing here. Anyway, I'm going to take a I'm going to take a poll for next time: hat or no hat? Okay. okay. That will be the question. See the the tipping, shirt or no shirt? <laughs> I, I was going to say the tipping point is going to be hat with pants, hat without pants. Pants with hat. <laughs> Pants with hat. hat. Yeah, that's yeah. The same difference on both options. But that's what it's, you should be putting out there because I think that, that's, that's going to skew the poll. Yeah, that's. I, I agree. I agree. <laughs> she said poll. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back to the porn. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. Of course, I appreciate all of you uh, for coming in and chatting with us in the chat room. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Sign up for the email list and check out reverendcampbell.com slash patrons if you want to figure out what that's all about. Have a great day and uh, or night, as it were, and until we can speak of the devil again, everyone, hail Satan. Hail Satan. Yes, it's the same intro as the outro. Just the